Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. Welcome back to another video in our Blender for AI Devs series. In this video, I'm going to talk about scripting a little bit. So scripting is definitely a broad topic, so I'm not going to be able to cover even the tiniest bit of it, but I will just show some things to kind of get you started and see what's possible. So I have Blender open, and since Blender maybe might change things a little bit from uh, version to version, I'll just show you that I'm using 2.90 right now, but I don't think scripting is going to change tremendously in between those, but you never know. So the scripting tab is the best place to get started, but if you aren't familiar with this, you can change any one of these tabs or create your own, and you can always change what the window is. So right here, you see it's this little icon right here, the Python console. You could change the layout so that Python console is what shows up. I just wanted to show you that, and then you can go back to 3D viewport or change it to whatever you like and add other windows and all that. That's a different topic. So in scripting, what you'll see is a 3D viewport up in the top left. You will see a Python console here, and you'll also see sort of an output thing here that's sort of a log of what's happening in Blender. And you'll notice if I change something, like let's change this for just a, a little bit, it'll show up down here and it kind of gives you a hint as to what's happening in the Python uh, behind the scenes. So pretty much everything that I've found in Blender is scriptable with Python. I haven't found many things that I can't quite do. Sometimes you have to get creative with your workarounds for things, but otherwise I've been very impressed with how much of Blender is accessible via script. And what you have here are two different options to do scripts. So this is an interactive Python console. So you can type in Python stuff right here. So I could say like a equals five, and then I could just do a plus four, enter, and then it's gonna do that math and output the result. So that's like about as simple as Python can get right there. But if you want to access things inside of your scene or inside of Blender, you can use the BPY library that you see things happening with. So for example, if I want to see how many objects are in my scene or better yet, list the different objects that are in the scene, it's this bpy.data.objects. There are other ways to get to this, uh, but this is a very direct way to do it. You hit enter and you'll see BPY collection three blend data objects. So clearly something happened. It didn't give us an error message. That's great, but we can't really see anything. I found a little trick is you can do that same thing. I'll hit up on the arrow keys and then that'll show me my previous command. You can always do up and down to sort of cycle through. And then if you just wrap this in list and then parentheses like this and then hit enter, then it will print out a list of those things. So you'll see that this is now a list of an object called camera, cube, and light. So that corresponds to what's up here. So that's pretty cool. We can access these as indices, like, let me show you that. I can do like this, and you see that the first index of this list is a camera, or, I can type in camera and it returns that same object. So there's just some useful things to know just to sort of get you started. If you need help, the Blender Python API, generally, I, I don't always remember exactly what the URL is for it, but Blender Python API, if you just search for that, hopefully the first result is the most recent iteration of it and you can search for anything you need to know here in the Blender Python API. So that's super useful. I've used it a lot. Sometimes it can be a little tough to figure out how exactly to use everything, but at least it's documented quite well. So what might we use this for? Well, here, there's not, you know, we can do this by hand, but I usually use this for experimenting, making sure that I can get something to work in script. If I want to run a lot of code, you do it over here. And if you click here, nothing happens. 
But if you click here, well, now we've got a text editor right here. And important thing I'll mention is right here, I've clicked here. So I would expect words to come up here. If my mouse happens to be over here and I start typing, notice that it shows up over here. So just like anything else in Blender, if you have your mouse in the wrong place while you're typing, then it won't work properly. So worth mentioning because it might drive you crazy, but at least you'll know something's wrong when you start, you know, typing and you, you click here and then you accidentally move your mouse over here or over here and something weird happens. So I just wanted to mention that. Now I'm going to paste in a script that I wrote. This is a very short, simple script, as you can see. The first thing we need to do is import BPY. Now, the reason we did not need to call that here before we started using it is because it shows you up here that it did some work for us. It says convenience imports and uh, I guess built-in modules right here. So BPY is already available to us here. So we don't have to say import for that, but in this script, we do need to import those explicitly. Now, I've created a list here of different colors and colors in Blender are from zero to one. So if you're used to colors of red, green, and blue being combined as being zero to 255, just divide that number by 255 and you've got your range from zero to one. So if I did it 0.5, that would be equivalent to like 127 on that color spectrum. So I've, I've set up different red, green, blue values so that they equal red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. And the idea with this little script right here is we're going to iterate through each of these colors. We're gonna change the color of this light. And then we're going to rotate the cube a little bit around the z-axis, and then we will render to a file. So this is what's happening here. We've got our this is just a basic Python enumerate, nothing specific to Blender here. Uh, here's our first Blender code where we're getting the light object. So we're finding it by name. So it's, it's looking for an object with this name. And I think it's case sensitive. So don't get too creative when you're trying to look for an object. Make sure that it matches exactly the name. Dot data dot color. And we're changing the, we're setting the color to 100 for this first element in the list. So it should set this to red. Then it's going to find our cube and set the rotation around the z-axis. So instead of do like setting it explicitly, I'm actually just going to in increase the z rotation just a tiny bit, so by 0.2. Then it's going to uh, set the file path you need to update the file path every time or else it's going to automatically just overwrite the last image that was rendered. And you'll see I'm putting it into my temporary directory into a scripting renders folder. Uh, and let's just make sure that I have that ready to go. Scripting renders. You can see that I tested this out, so I'm gonna delete these. And then bpy.ops.render.render write still. This just tells it to write a still image to a file. Okay, so that's all this script does. And the other thing that's important is while this is running, while this script is running, it's going to freeze up the UI because it's, it's running a script and, and the stuff that makes the UI work can't run while it's running a script. So what we need to do is open up under the window menu, we need to go to our toggle system console. And here we're going to see things pop up as it's rendering. And I'll mention if you are on Linux, maybe Mac, I'm not sure about Mac because I've never actually used Blender on a Mac before. Uh, this pops up, this is the terminal that you launch Blender from. So you don't have this option in Linux, at least that I've seen. It's whatever window came up when you launched Blender or whatever window you launched Blender from. So just be aware of that. So we're going to run this script and we should see some outputs here. So I'm going to click this little play button 
It's the run script button. And you'll see that the UI is kind of fro was frozen for a minute. And then this cube now looks like it's rotated a tiny bit. And you'll also see if I click on the light and go to the lighting settings, well, now it's magenta. That was the last color in our list. If I look at here, this ran very quickly because I was running it uh, with the EV renderer. So it, it went almost instantaneously, but it says it saved this file 1.png2345. And if we go into this folder, you can see that we have five different images here. And if I cycle through them, you can see that the cube rotated slightly each time, and then the color changed on the light. So that's about as bare bones of scripting as I can show, I think, without uh, it being completely uninteresting. But you can see how you have so much control over the scene, and you can render out after you've made your changes to the scene. This is very different from how you would traditionally render in Blender. You would typically set up animations and you would do all of your animating in like this timeline here at the bottom. You would set keyframes and do all that. You could do that, but when you're rendering for synthetic data for AI, it makes a lot more sense to have more control because when you render out, you can change things a lot more easily. You can do randomizations that are really difficult to do in my experience here. There are things uh, called drivers and you can do animation curves and things like that, but that gets really complicated really fast if you're trying to mix it with any sort of scripting and it can be really difficult, I think, to get things working the way that you want to. So hopefully this was helpful, and I just realized this script might have been a little small. So let me just blow it up for you a little bit. If you are interested in copying it, you can pause the video and uh, take a closer look at this. And otherwise, I hope this video has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and let us know what you thought.